الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له This is a hadith, an amazing hadith, one of the greatest hadith you could even say. It's a hadith narrated purely from Syrians. So every narrator in this, in the chain of narration, is from Damascus and that area. Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, an Abi Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi ma yarwihi an rabbihi anza wa jalla qal. Hadrat Abu Dhar Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we mentioned regarding him, that he was an ascetic, ascetic, that he used to go out of Medina and live separately alone, etc. But th- regarding fiqh, regarding knowledge of deen, the scholars mention that actually he was on par with Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala was that sahabi who when he moved to Kufa, Umar radiallahu ta'ala didn't want to send him to Kufa to teach knowledge, etc. But then he told the people of Kufa, أَثَرْتُكَ عَبْدَ اللَّهِ عَلَى نَفْسِي That I've given preference for of Abdullah upon myself that even though I want to keep him here so that the people of Medina even I can benefit but I'm sending him to Kufa and then afterwards when Ali radiallahu ta'ala later on traveled to Kufa he seen that Kufa was filled with 4,000 scholars and all under the tutelage and the scholarship of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. so this was Ibn Mas'ud so they mentioned that Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala was actually on the level of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That, um, but because of how hard, he, uh, you know, in terms of nature, he was a bit stronger, a bit harder. So his students, etc., didn't carry on his knowledge as much as Ibn Rasul. So he narrates from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. This is Hadith Qudsi. So there's been difference of opinion always. The scholars have discussed what does Hadith Qudsi mean? What's the difference be- between Hadith Qudsi and, and normal Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then what's the difference between Hadith Qudsi and Quran? So the difference between Hadith Qudsi and or the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is very simple that hadith could see the words the words and the meaning are from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and in a normal hadith the meaning is from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala the wording is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then in terms of Quran fundamentally there is no difference in terms of the fact that the wording is still from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala the only difference is in terms of rulings where a person can still touch a hadith could see without wudu etc he can't read hadith could see in, in salah these kind of rulings so there is no big uh, different. So he's narrating directly from Allah Taala. So what does Allah Taala say? Imam Ahmad Rahimullah said regarding this hadith, ليس لأهل الشام أشرف من هذا الحديث. That the people of Sham do not have a, a hadith which is better than or greater than this hadith. And one of the narrators from Abu Dharr radiallahu ta'ala, Abu Idris al Khawlani rahimullah, whenever he used to narrate this hadith, he used to fall on his knees out of awe, out of grandeur of Allah Taala. So Allah Taala, what what's, what does he what does he address in this? Is addressing the entirety of creation and he starts by saying Ya Ibadi O my servants Ya Ibadi O my servants so just in this Ya Ibadi that Allah wa Ta'ala says there's many things Allah wa Ta'ala is showing us that one is that there's a there's a link of ubudiyah of worship of subjection uh, submission to Allah wa Ta'ala and the way Allah Abd Allah wa Ta'ala uses this in the Quran sometimes to describe prophets describe pious people and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah wa Ta'ala only takes his name four times but describing him as a servant, many times Allah Taala says, "Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi, alhamdulillah alladhi anzal ala abdihi al-kitab." And whenever he's talking about something great regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there he uses the word "abd" to show that this is actually the highest status a person can reach. The lower we become in front of Allah Taala, the higher we get in front of Him. The lower we, the more we lower ourselves in front of Allah Taala, the higher we get in the rank of Allah Taala. Nima al-abd. When Allah Taala at the end of a story. Of Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam etc. Right at the end Allah Taala says Ni'm al-abd. Such a good servant he was. He doesn't say such a good prophet, such a good worshipper, whatever else. He says Ni'm al-abd. Such a good servant. So this is the level we have to try to attain of ubudiyah. And within this ubudiyah, this connection of worship between us and Allah Taala, it's, it's a connection of king and his, uh, the people under him. It's a connection of love. It's a connection of shame that we have to shame in front of Allah Taala. And Allah Taala in the Quran, when He uses the word ibad, sometimes it's actually to warn us that inna ibadi alayhim sultan that my servants, no one will be able to overpower them. Sometimes it's out of love. Qul ya ibadi asrafu ala la min rahmatillah. That all oh my beloved servants, do not despond, be despondent of the mercy of Allah Taala. Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Abbas radiAllahu anhu says this verse comes in the twenty fourth juz, is is the verse that gives the believers the most hope. Because Allah Taala says after that, in Inna Allah Allah forgives every single sin. 
so this is how Allah Taala Ta he's he's calling us by saying, "O oh my servant." And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, you have to remember every prophet was also a servant of Allah. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, even though the people raised him higher than a servant, what does the Quran say in the sixth juz? لَنْ يَسْتَنْكِفَ الْمَسِيحُ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَبْدًا لِلَّهِ That Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Jesus himself, does not feel it low of him, does not think of himself too high to call himself the servant of Allah tabarak ta'ala. Mentioned regarding one Christian, uh, not uh, a Christian scholar actually in recent times, that he wanted to become Muslim, but there was just one thing stopping him. He said, I'm happy with everything. But for my entire life, I've been saying that Jesus is God and Jesus is God, etc, etc. Now, I can't get myself to say that Jesus is. So I can't say that Jesus is now servant of God. So he wasn't happy with this. So it was just stopping him. Then he said, afterwards, somebody must have given him a translation of the Quran. So he was reading and he read this verse. That if Jesus himself is happy to say that he is a servant of God, then who am I to not say he is a servant of God and he accepted Islam. So this is Abd, Ubudiyah. We have to ask Allah Taala that He makes us true servants of Him, that we completely submit to Allah Taala. So Allah Taala starts by saying, "Ya ibadi, inni haramtu zulm ala nafsi. I made zulm, haram upon myself, forbidden upon myself. Wajaltu bainakum muharrama. I made it forbidden between you. Fala tazalamu. Do not commit zulm between another. What does zulm mean? Generally, we translate. I didn't translate it on purpose. Generally, we translate zulm as oppression. We say it's oppression, but that limits it because then a person can think I'm free of dhulm because dhulm is only for people who have uh, authority and they've got some kind of status and it's only upon the people under them. But dhulm is not restricted to people that are in charge. Dhulm can, it refers to in the Arabic definition, they say wadu shay fi ghayri mahalli, taking a thing out of its actual place or its actual rights and putting it in a different place or taking or not giving it its rights. This is all comes under dhulm and the opposite to be just. Again, it doesn't just mean a person, a king, a ruler is just. Everyone can be just. That means just putting things in its right place. And again, we don't mean tangible that I just put this button in its right place. That means it's just and now we've moved it, I've done dhulm. We're not referring to this. We're referring to in all things, tangible and intangible. That as soon as I'm doing the right thing, this is dhulm. As soon as I'm doing the wrong thing, this is unjust. <coughs> and one is dhulm upon yourself. Those people who oppress themselves. So how does a person oppress himself? himself? So Allah mentions in the Quran that ظلموا أنفسهم that they oppress themselves how? By forgetting Allah Taala, by not worshipping Allah Taala, many different ways. Basically, we didn't fulfill the rights of Allah Taala. ظلموا أنفسهم, and then the second is doing ظلم of other people. So that's when we're not fulfilling the rights of anyone. That can even include animals. Again, we mentioned the story of the woman. She didn't feed the cat, and upon this, Allah Taala put her in the fire of Jahannam. So this is dhulm can even be upon anim uh, animals. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He seen a he seen a uh, a lamb and uh, or a camel once. Or there were different narrations. And then, then the camel called Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He went to it, and the camel said that my master is not feeding me. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked, "Whose is this?" And then he said, "Allah Taala has ordered us to be soft and to be good and to be have good conduct with every single person, individual and everything with life. This is the most important thing. So this is also dhulm." And what's Allah about that pro promise for people who are just? Again, we mentioned what just is. It doesn't just mean that two people come to me and I judge right between them. This is me being just. It's in everything, in our transactions, in our dealings, in our ma matters, in how we walk, in how we talk. Everything we have to be just. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a hadith that those people who are just, they will be on pulpits of nur on the day of qiyamah, on the right hand side of Allah Taala, and Allah Taala says both sides are right. <laughs> we'll explain what that means another day. But the right hand side just means is more. Honor and respect for the person. You know, you put this. This is my right hand man. No one says this is my left hand man. <laughs> this is my right hand man. This is how they're going to be on the day of Qiyamah. These are the people that are just. So we have to ask Allah Taala that He gives us. Qis uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make dua as well that Allah Taala um, save us from being unjust and we Allah Taala give us um, um <coughs> allow us to be uh, just. Ya ibadi. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "O oh my servants." كُلُّكُمْ ضَالٌ إِلَّا مَنْ هَدَيْتُ All of you were misguided except those who are guided. فَاسْتَهْدُونِي أَهْدِكُمْ Then seek guidance from me, I will guide you. So what does this mean? That all of you were misguided. But did it mean that Allah Taala, Ta Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in a hadith that everyone is born upon fitra. So people translate this normally as Islam, but it doesn't mean Islam. Fitra means that we are born upon a natural state in which we are able to accept Islam. That's why Rasul Allah Taala, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Taala says in the Quran that uh, in the 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 state in the where the in the realm where the, of souls, alam al arwah, where we are souls, Allah Taala took a covenant. He took an oath from all of us. Alas to be rabbikum. I may I may not your Lord. 
And we said, Bala shahidna. We definitely agree and we accept that you are our Lord. But we don't remember this, or some Sahaba as well used to remember this. Ali radiallahu says, I remember giving my answer. So some people used to even remember this. But Allah ta'ala, He took this covenant from us and He's mentioned in the Quran, so it's definitely true. So that means we were born upon that state. Then now if you were raised up as a Jew, as a Christian, whatever you were raised up as, or you were raised up as a Muslim, or later on you accepted Islam, then Allah ta'ala kept that ability within a person to accept Islam. So it doesn't mean everyone was born a Muslim. That's why people always say revert. They say, oh, you shouldn't say a person converted to Islam. You have to say reverted because you were born a Muslim. This is not, <laughs> we shouldn't be so, uh, get so worked up on these kind of issues. They're very small tertiary issues. Actually, it just means the person was born in fitra, a natural state. And then we accepted Islam then, alhamdulillah. It doesn't just mean that we reverted back to uh, Islam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says in a hadith, man yahdillahu fala mudillala. Whoever Allah guides, there'll be no one that can misguide Allah. Wa man yudlilhu fala hadiyala. Whoever Allah misguides, no one can guide that person. Look at Abu Talib. He used to help Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much. He helped him in, 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 the, in the valley. He helped him in so many different places. He gave him protection. Until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until he didn't pass away, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Quraysh couldn't freely do what they wanted with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But even him, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tried so much to call him towards Islam. He didn't accept Islam. Even right on the last stage, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, just say one kalima so, so that I can fight your case in front of Allah ta'ala. And he said that he mentioned, he, he said the poems that if the... The pe- I want to do this, but the, the people will think that I'm leaving just because I got scared in the last minute, so I can't do this. So then even then, at, at that last minute, he didn't accept Islam. So Allah Taala revealed the verse after, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أحببت, That indeed you can't guide who you want. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah Taala guides who Allah Taala wants. And Bilal radiallahu ta'ala, when he heard this, he came running outside and he was very happy. And he said that, Glory be to Allah, all praises for Allah who guides who he wants and didn't leave it to Muhammad to guide who he wants. Or else Muhammad would have guided his family first then Quraysh, and where would Bilal, who is stuck in Africa, get guidance from Allah Taala? So this is Allah Taala. That's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah Taala says in the Quran that Alhamdulillah, Ladi Hadana, Lihada, all praises for Allah who guided us towards this. So this is from guidance, and that's when Allah Taala is saying, "Ask me for guidance." He's not mentioning to the kuffar; it's to the Muslims as well. That's why in the Quran we are told to say, "Ihdi Nasrat al Mustaqim." At least twenty times a day we say, "O Allah, guide me." Allah guide me to the right path. And this refers to increasing guidance. Those who want guidance, Allah Taala increases them in guidance, gives us ability to do more and to get closer to Allah Taala. Ya ibadi kullukum ja'iun illa man at'amtu. Oh my servants, all of you were hungry except the ones who I fed. Fastat'imuni ut'imkum. So ask me for food, I will feed you. This Allah Taala in the Quran he mentions ma ma min dabbatin fil ardi illa ala Allah rizquha. There's no animal no human, no living thing, except Allah Taala has taken it, uh, taken it upon Himself to give provisions to that, that individual. Inna Allah huwa razaq. Allah is the only Inna Allah razaq. Allah could have said this, but huwa razaq. Allah is the only one who feeds. La uh, nasaluka rizqa. We don't ask you to give provision. Nahnu narzukuk. We'll give you provision. Allah Taala has taken it upon Himself. So then we have to see how we can constantly ask Allah Taala for food. Fastat imuni utinkum. Ya ibadi kullukum arin illa man kasautu. Oh my servants, all of you are naked. Except the one I clothed. Fastaksuni aksukum. So ask me for clothes, I will clothe you. So here kasa, it means clothing, but it can also mean privacy and covering. How Allah Taala has covered our sins. Allah Taala has covered our faults, defects. Allah Taala has covered our bodily defects as well by giving us skin or giving us clothes. This is all from Allah Taala. We have to constantly be doing shukr to Allah Taala for this as well. So we're asking Allah to cover us in this world and the hereafter. That on the day of Qiyamah, how Allah Taala He can expose all our sins in front of everyone, our loved ones, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How embarrassed we'd be on that day. So we ask Allah Taala to protect us in this world and to protect us in the hereafter. That's what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. The worst of sinners, the worst of sinners, is the mujahirun. Allah Taala will forgive all except the mujahirun. Mujahirun are those people who sin at night, and Allah Taala covers their fault, and they come in the morning and they raise that cover which Allah Taala put upon their sin. That Allah Taala hid your sin. But in the morning you go and you boast about it, you tell someone about it. So this is Allah Taala says, this person won't be, that the scholars mentioned is actually four things that are worse than the sin itself. One is the sin we do. There's four things worse than the sin. One is planning the sin. One is uh, regret over not doing the sin. One is boasting about the sin. One is encouraging others to do the sin, etc. So that's another issue. So this is also uh, how we have to make sure that we're also covering the sins that we do. Ya ibadi, we shouldn't do sins at all in the first place. Ya ibadi, innikum tukhti'una bil-layli wa nahar wa anaghfiru dhunuba jami'a fastaghfiruna yaghfirkum. That, O oh my servants, indeed you sin by day and night. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said in a hadith that he smiled as he stood on the, uh, on the, on the mount and he said, he, he said that, 
Allah Taala ta smiles as well because He says, "My servant is asking me forgiveness, knowing that no one forgives except me." So only Allah Taala ta can forgive us. And Rasulullah says, "Inna kum tuqtiuna bil laila wal nahar, wa ana aqfiru dhunub jamia, fastaghfiruni aqfil lakum." So ask me forgiveness, I will forgive you. You know this istighfar and asking Allah forgiveness. He's got so many benefits apart from just the sin being wiped out. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Man lazim al istighfar." Whoever holds on to istighfar, jaal Allah min. Allah will create a way out from every tight, narrow space. From every depression. The sisters were asking regarding depression. From every worry, every anxiety, Allah creates a way out. Allah provides for him from where he couldn't ever even comprehend. Allah, so this is from istighfar. So one is the fact that we do istighfar, Allah forgives our sins. Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam told his people that do istighfar, what will happen? قُلْ تُسْتَغْفِرُ رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارَ Allah Taala will send beneficial rain. So we're doing istighfar, we're asking Allah to forgive us. Allah is sending rain that be due to our istighfar. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارَ وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ Allah Taala will give you wealth. وَبَنِينَ Allah Taala will give you children. وَيَجْعَلُ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Allah Taala will give you rivers. So then, this is all benefits of istighfar. So we have to see how we can bring istighfar into our lives. <coughs> Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. If you want to sin, Allah Taala will will get rid of all of you, and you'll bring such a group of people who will sin, so Allah can forgive them. That's how much Allah Taala loves to sin. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Taala loves that sinner who turns back to him more than a person who's out on a journey in the desert, and he's got all his his uh, luggage and all his uh, basically his uh, what he, what he can survive with. It's all on his camel, and then he's he loses the camel. The camel goes away, and he's taken all the luggage. So now he's got nothing to survive on. He can't tra travel. He can't survive. So then he's waiting, he's looking, he's looking, he gets tired. And he finds one tree, he lays down under the tree, he says, I'm just going to fall asleep and wait for death. So he's laying there and he's heat and he's got no way of survival. He's hungry, probably very tired. And then what happens? His eyes open and he sees the camel right in front of him. So imagine how happy that person would be at that time. That he gets so happy, one narration mentioned in Sahih Muslim, that uh, he'll say, Oh Allah, you are my servant, I am your Lord. Out of joy. Not because he means it, but out of joy. He can't even comprehend exactly what he's saying. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, out of farh, he says this, shiddat al farh. That extreme happiness, he says, oh Allah, you are my servant, I am your Lord. Rasulullah says, Allah is more happy than that servant who makes istighfar and turns back to him. So we have to see how we can become those who turn back to Allah. Ta ya ibadi, lan tablughu dhurri fatadhurruni. Oh my servant, you can't get to, uh, you won't be able to reach any, uh, you won't be able to give me any hajj, uh, harm. So, if the entire world was trying to give Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Taala harm, they won't be able to give. We mentioned yesterday, if the entire world wanted to give a person harm and Allah didn't want it, it never happened. So how can they reach? Fir'aun was so stupid, once he he fired an arrow into the sky and Allah Taala returned it with blood. So he thought he killed the Rabb of the Lord of Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Walam tablughu nafi fatan fauni, and you won't be able to reach benefit to give me benefit. You won't be able to give me any benefit or harm. So this, what we do is for ourselves. You know, Allah Taala doesn't need any persons. Uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said to his people إِن تَكْفُرُوا أَنْتُمْ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِعًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيُّ وَنْحَمِيدٌ If you people and the entire world to commit kufr right now إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيُّ وَنْحَمِيدٌ Allah Taala is still praiseworthy Allah Taala is still uh, independent of all of you يَا أَيُّ النَّاسِ أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهُ أَيُّهُ بِلِيْفْ You are in need of Allah Taala وَاللَّهُ الْغَنِيُّ وَنْحَمِيدٌ Allah is independent Allah Taala doesn't need this 1.8, 1.9 billion people to make to His worship the entirety of the skies there's not even one four finger space. That doesn't have an angel worshiping Allah Taala, so Allah Taala doesn't need us. Ya ibadi, O my servants, lo anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum. O my servants, if the first of you, the last of you, the human kind, the jinn kind from amongst you, kanu ala atqa qalbi rajulin wahid minkum, become like the most pious man from amongst you, which could either mean in each time or Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he was the most pious at that time, or he was always the most pious. So even if he refers to everyone, became like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ma zada dalika min mulki shay'a. This won't increase my my kingship. My grandeur, Allah Taala won't become greater if seven billion people now became like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya ibadi, lo anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum. If the first of you, last of you, humankind, jinn kind were to become like the worst of you, so Fir'aun or whoever you want to say, this, some people we can say right now as well. Ma naka sadari kami mulki shay'a. This won't defect, decrease my kinship, my grandeur, my honor in any way, shape, or form. It's not like Allah Taala has become low because now no one is worshiping Him. يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم قاموا على صعيد واحد. That is the first of you, the last of you, humankind, jinn kind, were to stand on one flat plane. فسألوني you start asking from me and you ask and you ask and you ask. Another narration says you ask so much that you stop finding things to ask for and then I keep giving. Still after that. 
فأعطيت كل إن كل إنسان مسألة I give every single servant exactly what he wants ما نقص ذلك مما عندي إلا كما ينقص المخيط إذا أدخل البحر This will not decrease what's in my possession my my treasure except that much which is decreased when for example you dip a um, what's the word you dip a needle needle you dip a needle into the ocean and how much water comes out from that needle compared to the ocean so if you dip a needle into the ocean and you take it out so how much water is remaining on this needle compared to the entire ocean and even this is an example scholars say obviously this is not Allah's treasures are endless so something that's eternal and infinite can't be described can't be compared to something that has um, a limit so Allah Ta'ala is just using this as an example. So this is Allah Ta'ala saying the entire humankind, jinn kind, from the beginning to the end, are all asking Allah for everything. And Allah Ta'ala is uh, giving them, giving them. This is not going to decrease from the treasures of Allah Ta'ala. In, the, in the, another narration in Tirmidhi, وَذَارِكَ بِأَنِّي جَوَّادِ This is because I am jawad. I love to give. Wajid, majid. أَفْعَلُ مَا أُرِيد I do what I, do, I want. I do what I want. وَأَطَائِي كَلَامْ وَأَذَابِي كَلَامْ And my giving is just words. And my punishing is just worse because Allah just says kun. It's not actually Allah Taala is doing anything. Allah's kun is enough for him to give you punishment or to give you reward. So how can it decrease anything from Allah Taala? Words are not; they won't decrease or increase a person. Ya ibadi, the last thing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says: Oh my servants, inna ma hiya amalukum. This is these are just your actions. Uhsiha lakum. I will count them. In the Quran Allah Taala says many times that the book of deeds Allah Taala will count them. لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة. Not a small thing, not a big thing will will be left behind. Or may, uh, whoever even uh, does some misdeed, even if it's misqal adarra, we'll bring that on the day of judgment as well. Allah Taala mentions these things. Thumma wa fiqum iyaha. Then I will give you your full reward or your full uh, return. فمن وجد خيرا فليحمد الله. Whoever re- re- finds good in his actions, he should praise Allah Taala. So we we learn that this is the speech of the people of Jannah when they enter Jannah. They'll say Alhamdulillah, Alladhi hadana li hada. All praises for Allah who guided us. Alhamdulillah, Alladhi. وقال الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده all praises for Allah who spoke the truth in His promise this is all the speech of the people of uh, Jannah so praise of Allah so he's saying whoever finds good should praise Allah ومن وجد غير ذلك فلا يلومن إلا نفسه and whoever finds anything other than good in his deeds then فلا يلومن إلا نفسه don't blame anyone but himself and this again the Quran mentions regarding the people of Jahannam that in in Jahannam they're going to be blaming one another the elders will say that you guys we didn't tell you to follow us and the people that follow, they'll say, but you guys should get more punishment. You guys should get our share of punishment. And Allah Taala mentions the speech of Shaitan as well on the day of Qiyamah. He'll stand and he'll say, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَعْدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعْدَكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ Allah gave you a promise, I gave you a promise. Allah was true in His promise and I lied in my promise. وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ I didn't have any power over you except that I called you and you listened. Shaitan can't force a person to listen. So he said, I call you, you listen. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسِكُمْ Don't blame me, blame yourselves. مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ يُسْرِخِي I couldn't force you to do sin and you couldn't force me to be misguided. إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Salman رضي الله تعالى عنه, he says that a Muslim who does good deeds, a Muslim who's good, a Muslim when he's in good health and ill health, there's a reason for it. What does that mean? A Muslim when he's good, in good health, that means he can do good deeds. When he's in ill health, he knows that it's from Allah Taala, so he can wipe away his sins. Whereas a non-Muslim, he mentions a non-Muslim in good health, in ill health, he's just like an animal who you, you tie up for a while and then you release. He doesn't know why he's being tied up, he doesn't know why he's being released. Whereas a Muslim, he knows I'm in good health so I can worship Allah, I can do good. I'm in ill health so Allah can forgive my sins. So this when the when the people say that, you know, if Islam is there, then what about the question of evil and these things? We have to understand that Islam is the only thing that gives wisdom towards evil and suffering. That people understand that there's a reason behind it. That the non-Muslims, they're going through hardship in this world, they'll go through hardship in the hereafter. But we know there's a reason, there's wisdom behind the hardship in this world. So this hadith, Rasulullah, the, the reason for this hadith is to understand Allah's virtues upon us. And also that we only have to ask from Allah, Taala, And also the treasures of Allah, Taala are endless. So that we should only ask only from Allah, Taala. الله تبارك وتعالى يجوز على بلتي قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا